Did you know that a significant portion of Siberia is covered by permafrost, permanently frozen soil that shapes the very landscape? But the story I have to tell is about a different event that took place on this icy canvas of Siberia, and you'll never guess what happens. You really won't this time, so make sure you stay till the end. But before we get into it, don't forget to follow Mr. Novella on Spotify or subscribe on YouTube, leave a like, and click the bell button to get notified as soon as a new novella gets released. Just a quick note, my actual name is Sergio de Carvalho Neves. I'm 32 years old, and I only started writing at the beginning of 2023 as a hobby when I created Mr. Novella. I write all my novellas from scratch, so right now it's just one new upload per week. But with time, I'll be uploading two per week, then three. I wanted to thank you for your support, and I look forward to the day I can hit 1,000 followers and subscribers. Now with that said, let's dive into the story. It was 87, somewhere over Siberia, and Harrison O'Brien, the bloke they called Homer, had his eyes glued to the cockpit of Flight Delta Zero Niner. He'd flown enough hours to feel like the sky was his turf. Tonight, though, felt off, like something in the air wasn't right. Homer's gig tonight was standard, a routine flight across the barren Siberian stretch. He hailed from Manchester, with dreams soaring higher than the bloody clouds he navigated. The radio jabbered away, voices crackling through the speakers, but his focus was on the dash, a disco of lights giving him the lowdown. But then, the vibe went wonky. The plane started shaking, like it was battling some unseen enemy. Homer's gut clenched as he grappled with the controls, but the beast was having none of it. Siberia outside? A canvas of chaos as the aircraft became its own thing, defying every rule of gravity. The plunge was a mad symphony. Metal screeched, engines howled, and the stench of burning fuel invaded the cockpit, mixing with the stink of terror. Lights danced outside the windows, a dizzying spectacle of impending disaster. In the heat of the moment, a choice had to be made. Bail out or try the impossible crash land and hope for the best. Split second call, the dice rolled, and the metal bird kissed the Siberian turf with a bang. Chaos outside, a scene straight out of a nightmare, with metal bits everywhere and the scent of wreckage choking the air. Homer found himself banged up but still kicking amidst the wreckage. Pain shot through him, bruises and aches singing a symphony of agony. Despair hung heavy in the air, swirling around the remains of his dreams. Heart hammering, Homer grappled with the harsh truth. Alone in the Siberian wilderness, wrecked dreams as company, he felt the isolation sinking in. The land stretched out, unfriendly as ever, a canvas of unknowns. The Siberian wind howled, and Homer's breath mingled with the icy air. A 24-year-old Brit, stuck in Siberia, dealing with the aftermath of a massive crash. Dreams shattered, body aching, and survival hanging in the balance. This was no picnic in the park. Homer's eyes fluttered open, but the world that greeted him was far from the wreckage he remembered. The Siberian landscape had morphed into an otherworldly realm. A thick fog veiled the surroundings, lending an air of mystique to the land. The horizon was an ethereal painting, with colors that seemed to dance in an unspoken harmony. As he navigated this bewildering terrain, Homer's gaze fixated on a distant silhouette, a majestic creature soaring through the skies. Its colossal wings spanned the heavens, a sight that defied logic. Was it a trick of the mind or something far beyond comprehension? Moving forward, he found himself amidst an enchanted forest, the kind that folklore spun tales about. Trees stood tall, their branches adorned with shimmering orbs that cast an otherworldly luminescence. It was as if he had stepped into a realm plucked from legends, a setting reminiscent of tales from ancient scrolls. The path led him to a village that seemed plucked from a bygone era. Stone structures with intricate designs dotted the landscape, and inhabitants clad in attire of a forgotten time went about their business as if Homer's presence was but a passing breeze in their enchanted lives. In the heart of this peculiar village stood a grand cabin, weathered by time yet radiating an inexplicable allure. Homer stepped inside, the door closing behind him with a hushed finality, leaving no trace of the surreal world he'd entered. 
The interior was a labyrinth of mysteries, each room whispering stories of bygone eras through tapestries and relics. Moving deeper, an inexplicable energy filled the air, a tingling sensation that hinted at something profound. The climax awaited in a grand chamber at the cabin's core. A bridge of smooth pebbles stretched across serene waters, bathed in the hues of a purple sunset, a sight that seemed plucked from dreams. Standing at this surreal juncture, Homer faced a door that beckoned him forward. The world around him seemed to shift, and as he stepped onto the bridge, the cabin transformed into an enigmatic portal. The door ahead opened onto the unknown, inviting him to explore a realm that defied explanation. In this twilight realm, Homer stood on the cusp of something beyond his wildest imagination, a doorway to a realm where mysteries awaited, challenges loomed, and the line between reality and fantasy blurred into an interesting tone. Homer crossed the threshold of the door, finding himself in a space that felt like the epicenter of the universe. The air hummed with an otherworldly energy, and the surroundings pulsed with a cosmic rhythm. The bridge behind him vanished into the unseen, leaving only the door through which he entered. In the heart of this mystical expanse, Homer sensed a presence. A hooded figure in crimson emerged, her flowing red hair cascading like a cascade of blood. She stood in silence, a silent observer of this interdimensional realm. It took a moment for Homer to notice her, and when he did, a shiver ran down his spine. The woman named Cassie exuded a beauty that was both alluring and unsettling. There was something majestically eerie about her presence. Cassie broke the silence with a voice that resonated through the fabric of reality. Homer, she spoke, her words hanging in the cosmic void. You died on impact. The revelation hung in the air like an unspoken truth. Homer had already sensed the finality of the crash, the surreal sights that followed serving as confirmation. I am the guide of the in-between, Cassie continued, her eyes piercing through the cosmic expanse. You stand at a crossroads, Homer. Two choices lie before you. Her words echoed, each syllable carrying the weight of cosmic significance. Cassie explained that he could either embrace the in-between, forging his own path to the afterlife, or he could return to the mortal realm. However, the latter came with a heavy cost. If you return, she whispered, you won't be the same. The impact has left its mark, and your mortal vessel may bear the scars. There's a chance you might not walk again or worse paralyzed. It's a gamble, and the choice is yours. Homer grappled with the gravity of the decision. The cosmic expanse seemed to hold its breath, awaiting his choice. The allure of the familiar mortal world tugged at him, but the uncertainty of what awaited on the other side left him standing at the precipice of a profound choice. Homer locked eyes with Cassie, and it was like peeking into another world, maybe even the afterlife. Something deep stirred within her gaze, hinting at stories untold, choices hanging in the air like cosmic threads. I've made my call, Homer declared, his voice brimming with conviction. Cassie nodded and drew nearer. In that cosmic space, she pulled him close, and their lips met in a kiss that felt like the blending of destinies. The moment lingered, suspended in the endless expanse of the in-between. As their connection deepened, Everything faded into a pitch-black void. The celestial surroundings, the bridge, and Cassie vanished, leaving only the echo of their intertwined destinies. Homer jolted awake in a Russian hospital, sterile smells and stark reality fluting back. Sergery's dual H, Bandica's binding wounds. He felt the weight of it all. Physically able to walk again, the world was different. Fate had stolen his hearing, a silent toll paid to the cosmic forces. The symphony of life silenced, leaving Homer in a world of quiet, echoes. Back home, Homer faced familiar sights with altered senses. Life lost its vibrant hues. The sky, once his playground, now felt like an endless expanse of emptiness. The absence of sound, a vacuum he couldn't fill. Retreating from the military, Homer found solace in creativity. As a writer and artist, he poured his soul into pieces that resembled the in-between, a world beyond the tangible. Yet amidst his artistic pursuits, a chapter remained untold. Homer, a British Royal Air Force pilot flying over Russian territory, 
found himself confined, a political prisoner. Locked up for six months, he became a pawn in geopolitical negotiations until the British government secured his release. His creation soared, making him a sensation. Deaf to the world, he became known for his art and books about the in-between and his near-death experience. Yet success didn't fill the void. Thoughts lingered on the enigmatic kiss, the cosmic experience, and unanswered questions that echoed in his silent world. In the quiet solitude of his apartment, Homer found solace in his final creation, a painting that captured a moment lost in the recesses of his memory. The canvas portrayed him, stepping into an enchanted forest, hand in hand with a mysterious woman, assumed to be Cassie. The strokes of color whispered of cosmic mysteries and unspoken tales. With his artistic legacy complete, Homer's path took an unexpected turn. One day, he vanished from his apartment, leaving behind only the echo of footsteps that seemed to melt into the whispers of the wind. The enchanted forest in the painting beckoned him, and like a chapter closing in the cosmic novel of his life, he set out for the Siberian wilderness in Russia. Homer was never seen again. To this day, his disappearance remains a puzzle. Some speculate that he succumbed to the harsh embrace of the Siberian wilderness, while others entertain the notion that Cassie, the enigmatic guide of the in-between, claimed him for reasons unknown. The truth, like the cosmic mysteries Homer once embraced, eludes those who ponder his fate. And so, the painting in his apartment became a testament to a man who dared to tread on the fringes of reality, a man who in the end vanished into the enchanting unknown, leaving behind only a canvas that whispered of cosmic secrets and the eternal allure of the in-between. And that concludes this novella. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the story. Let me know your thoughts on this novella in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to Mr. Novella on YouTube and follow Mr. Novella on Spotify. It lets the algorithm gods know I'm doing a good job. Whether you're listening in the morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are, thank you for journeying through the darkness with us. And, as they say in Russia, Poderzi moje pivo ubliudok. Until next time, cheerio.